symbolism. Symbolism is something that we find through the Bible over and over and over again. There are so many layers to the depth of the meaning of a lot of the words in the Bible that when you dissect it and you really pull that out and put it together, it just helps you to have that much more understanding about what God is saying. The great thing about the Bible is that we can never out learn it and get to the point where, oh, I've learned everything there is to learn because there's so many layers to the meaning. So that's what we're going to be talking about, I think, all week. Um, we'll see where the Holy Spirit leads. But today we're talking about new wine. And we may be talking about new wine for a few days. There is an enormous amount of information about it. And today we're gonna to be focusing on the Old Testament. That brings us right to Genesis 27, starting in verse 28. <clears throat> and it says, May God give you the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Now in the ESV, it does not call this new wine, but when you go to the Hebrew word, and I may be butchering the pronunciation, which is tirush, it translates as new wine. It's not wine that has aged, it's wine that's just been put together. When we look at this verse, where does the dew of heaven come from? Where does the fatness of the earth come from? Where does the grain and the wine come from? God, may God give you the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. It is pointing to the fact that God is our provider. He is the one that we go to for our food. He is the one we go to for our shelter, our water. He gives us everything that we need. Now, when I looked at the lexicon, it got very interesting. It means head of household, as in giving permission to marry. Right away, I'm thinking about the fact that the church is called the bride of Christ. So this new wine is connected to the bride of Christ. It's connected to the fact that we are married to Christ, that Christ is going to come back for us, and that we are his bride. Now, as we look deeper into this meaning, it means that we have permission. We have permission to work within God's kingdom. We have permission to be an active part of building God's kingdom. We have permission to go to God in, mar in not in marriage, in um, prayer. We can go straight to God. We don't have to have a go-between or anything like that. Um, it's also the top of the body. It's the head. It's the authority or role of a leader. We walk in the authority of Jesus Christ. This new wine is pointing to the fact that we have the authority to look a demon in the eye and say, get out of here in Jesus name. And it has to abide by that. It also means um, a place where the head is laid. It's a place where we can rest. We can rest in God's presence. We can have that holy rest. Um, it's also a place of beginning. It's where something begins. We enter into that relationship with Christ and we begin that marriage. Um, in Genesis 27, 37, it also talks about this word. It's exactly the same word. And that says, and Isaac answered and said unto Esau, behold, I have made him your Lord and all his brethren, brethren have I given to him for, for servants and with corn and wine I have sustained him and shall not and what shall I do now unto thee my son that's coming from King James Virgin so once again it's pointing out that God is our provider in numbers 18:12 it says all the best of the oil and all the best of the wine again that's that new wine and of the wheat and of the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto the Lord them have I given thee. You have the authority, you have the permission to give God your very best. We see that word again in Deuteronomy 7, 13. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land, the corn and your wine. That's that new wine. And that oil and, the, and increase thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he swore unto the fathers to give thee. 
And then in Deuteronomy 18, 4, the first fruits also of thy corn and thy wine and thy oil and the first of the fleece of the sheep thou shalt thou give him. So this is an exchange going back and forth. God provides us with all those um, all those things and we're to give him that, that tithe back. We're to give him that back. And then in Judges 9, 13, it says, and the, and the vine said unto them, should I leave my wine, which cheer, cheereth God and man, and go to be promoted to over the trees? So once again, that wine is being provided by God. In 2 Kings 18, 32, it says, Until I come and take you away to a land like your, your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of oil and of honey, that ye may live and not die, and hearken... And hearken not unto Hezekiah unto when he persuadeth the, you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. So once again, the Lord is giving us that promise, that promise of authority. So this new wine points straight to grace. It's reformation. It's God structuring and building his kingdom, giving us that authority to operate within his kingdom and the permission to operate within his kingdom. So it's our job to step out and follow that. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.